Hi folks, welcome to a bit Retro Journal. Um, today I'm going to be working with my Radio Shack TRS-80 Pocket Computer 1 uh, in celebration of Septandi, which is celebrating all things Radio Shack uh, in the month of uh, September. This is the third iteration of it. I think the first iteration came out two years ago in 2019, and uh, then last year uh, uh, was the first time I heard about it. Uh, well, actually, because my channel is just only a little over a year old, and I participated in it and had a lot of fun. I think one of the videos I did last year is fixing the screen on that, as well as another video was fixing the um, printer, which was also broken. And so they're still working, and then I did a few other ones. Uh, one I did at the very end was um, where I did what I called Retroland, where I was able to type in a basic program here, a very simple basic program, and then... Uh, take the audio recorded on my computer and then transform it to audio that my ZX81 could read and run. And then vice versa, I also went in the other direction where I could take the um, uh, audio from my ZX81 and run it on my uh, Radio Shack computer. Now, what's important when you do that is that the basics are obviously different, and so you have to be very, very careful not to include statements that one can't translate into the other. But it worked, and it worked beautifully. Uh, so that was, I think, the last day in September I did that. And then I did another video uh, a week and a half later in October uh, where I, I called it Retroland version 2. And this time I decided to automate it. So I wrote a Python script. And in that Python script, uh, what I did was um, I, uh, I automated the uh, capturing. So basically I, I had uh, this to the mic port on my computer. And I had that hooked to the ear port, and I would do a, a save on this and load on this. Uh, the Python script was running and listening, and so what would happen is it would it would capture the audio, convert it to the proper, well, to, it took the audio and converted to basic, and then convert that to ZX81 audio, and then load it in here. And it, it you know took maybe 90 seconds or so. And it would actually do the conversion. It was pretty cool. It was automated. And so I want to show you that because it, this happened after Septandi last year. And I only got like 65 views because I think people were not that interested at the time because Septandi had already passed by. So I thought, well, you know, why not demonstrate that to you again? So um, I, I think the last, that, that October 11th video was 45 plus minutes long because I actually built the Python script. So today I'm just going to run through the Python script and just in a few minutes just to tell you how it works. Um, and this time I'm going to have a more sophisticated basic program on here, which is a, a decimal hexadecimal conversion program. Let me show you that program. And, and by the way, I can actually take this off the, uh, so this is a, a very portable calculator like um, uh, pocket computer with a couple of K of memory. And I got this literally um, a month or two after I got my ZX81. So this was literally my second computer uh, ever uh, and then this is actually just a, uh, a cassette uh, so I can read a mic and ear and also remote control and the power is actually for uh, for the cassette but also for a printer which I fixed last time so that's a working printer but let me show you the program I have on here and I'm going to have to be very careful with regard to um, yeah so you gotta uh, see if this works Yes, yeah, so if you angle it improperly, you're going to get a lot of crap on the screen. So maybe trying not to have the camera in here either. So let's see what this gives us. It's turned on. Uh, and then if I say R-U-N, enter, enter decimal number. I'm going to go four, five, six, seven, and hit return. And what this is going to compute is, is the least significant to the most significant. So this is the rightmost digit, seven. And you got to hit return every time the next number comes up. D, one, one. So the number is one, one, D, seven. Done, right. For four, five, six, seven. And uh, again, just to show you what the code looks like, if I do that, uh, let's see if I'm at the top. So that's the bottom of the, uh, so I'm going backwards from top to bottom. And you can see it's a, it's a pretty lengthy program. Um, so again, this is written, uh, so the TRS-80 Pocket Computer Basic actually has a lot of features 
that I can't use in here because um, it's not compatible with the GX81 basic. So I, I had to write this such that it's very generic. Oops, I'm going the wrong direction. You can see that, uh, yeah. And uh, and this program should run uh, on the ZX, it, it will run because I ran it last time. In any case, so that's what uh, uh, I want to do today. Uh, for celebrating uh, uh, everything uh, Tandy and Radio Shack. Um, and before I go to the uh, my lap, my, my PC, my Windows PC, I also wanted to show you what else I'm up to. So I've got these um, two Texas Instruments uh, um, calculators. And, and you'll notice that they have a cable. And it's they're like tiny earphone jacks. They have three things on it because it has a network connection. So I'm I'm, I'm going to play with seeing if I can't get this network connection to go from one to the other. Now these are powerful. I think they have Z80s in them. You can load games and all that stuff. So that's something else I'm going to try. But now I just want to see can you actually connect them. So I might do that in the future video. This won't come out in the next month or so. But it's just kind of what I'm playing with. Uh, today, uh, as well as, as uh, my my TRS-80 pocket computer. But yeah, so uh, I think that would be pretty cool if I can get, uh, uh, if, if I can, if I can show you how, how to get the, um, this to work with uh, uh, the ZX81. Now, to, to make this more general, I could, uh, when I show you the Python code, I could easily also create a translator that might take uh, TRS-80 pocket computer basic and if it finds things that aren't compatible with ZX81 basic, it could change that to conform to that. That would make it more complicated. And I don't think there's much interest in that for the um, TRS-80 uh, pocket computer and ZX81 basic. Now, if this were Commodore uh, 64 uh, going maybe to ZX Spectrum, that might be interesting. And so that might be an interesting task. Now, I have a ZX Spectrum that's not working. I don't have a Commodore 64. It's probably something I want to eventually get. So, yeah, maybe in the future, a retro LAN will be actually creating software that allows you to uh, take a program from one and run it on the other. Now, there, um, again, you're dealing with Microsoft Basic for the Commodore and Sinclair Basic for the ZX Spectrum. But you could also go from, you know, one uh, Microsoft Basic to another, Commodore to... Maybe a, a um, Texas Instruments computer, which I think is run, runs Microsoft Basic, or you could just write a translator, which wouldn't be too hard, just to make sure it conforms uh, from uh, to, to the generic Basic uh, uh, that each computer could read in. So you couldn't probably do graphics, and especially not machine code. But in any case, so that's something that if folks are interested in that, you should put it in the comments. What I want to go do next is just show you what the Python script looks like on my Windows machine. So let's go ahead and do that. So briefly, um, here's my Python script. That I, so this is the thing I wrote uh, uh, about a year ago. And I hadn't really done much Python, so it was kind of fun to write. I really feel like Python is sort of a modern basic. But uh, um, basically, um, I uh, it had to uh, uh, listen to uh, the audio port. Uh, and it generated a WAV file, uh, and uh, then, uh, but you know, when after it recorded the uh, audio that was coming from my pocket computer, TRC pocket computer, um, it saved it in the audio file, and then after that, it um, called a bunch of conversion programs um, that I had installed: WAV to bin, ZX text to P, and then had this. Um, Java uh, jar file that then actually would play the um, so basically what you did is you you um, converted the wave file to uh, so one of these so this command here I believe converted the um, TRS-80 pocket computer audio to a basic file and and this P2 1211 just told it what type of Computer was, and so the Sharp 1211 was the same as the pocket, the TRC pocket computer one. Uh, so that's what this particular executable did. And then I took um, ZX81 
executable that would that converts a uh, text to a, a P file. And then this utility takes a P file for a ZX81 and actually plays it as audio. So just needed these three uh, executables. There are also executables where I can go the other direction, but this was the one that I showed. It's a very simple, um, you know, it's exactly what you want Python to use for, right? Uh, captures the audio stream and then we call some, do some system calls to get it done. So it's not very big. So I'll let you, uh, um, all right, so this is where it ends in case you want to take a picture of that and then we go up. So yeah, it's a page and a, page and a half probably of, of Python code and that's it. So um, yeah, so what I want to do is uh, give it a try. So uh, let me show you that. First, I, I need to uh, arrange the camera so you can kind of see both uh, the screen and the um, uh, both screens, uh, and then also I'm going to have to move the pocket computer. Another thing I want to do is uh, the uh, um, uh, I actually need to change this program slightly. Yeah, see if I can put it in. Yeah, so uh, this should be set back to zero. Um, by the way, sometimes you do get a little bit of noise on the channel and it, it might click up. So you could do something like five would just be as safe as zero. Um, certainly when this thing makes a noise, it's above 10. Uh, so if you do want to do like five or maybe two, it might be safer. So I'm going to put it at two just to be safe. It should be zero, but I've, I've experienced at times if I'll have to reboot my, um, my pocket computer. Let me move that somewhere reasonable. I'll have to reboot, I'll have to reboot or, or <laughs> reboot, turn this power on and off and it'll go back to zero. So I'm going to put the level at two just to be safe. And the other part is uh, I'm actually not doing, um, uh, I guess I went off screen here. Uh, instead of having this be hello, I, I'm going to just name this to out. Uh, I'm going to ignore the file name anyway, but just to be a bit more complete. So those are the two changes I've made to uh, to this little program. Uh, level of two, just to be a little bit above one and uh, out. So uh, the um, and so what I want to do is I'm going to I'm going to close this now. Uh, and again, you'll just play around with the level. And by the way, the the other thing to note on that is. Um, uh, the. Um, Okay, putting this back in the frame here. The um, this uh, Pi Audio library actually doesn't come uh, come with the the default um, uh, installation, uh, but you can actually get it, and it's pretty easy to get. If you use the pip command to install it, it'll ask for the uh, Visual C plus plus compiler, but you can actually get a pre compiled version. I'll put a link in where I found mine. Uh, I think the Wave comes with it. I think Audio uh, Audio OP already comes with the default is sort of system OS, but Wave and Pi Audio, you have to add, add that import. Okay, so I'm going to close this just to sort of clean this up a little bit. Uh, let's move this to the top so we can see when, um, and then we're going to move uh, this also to the top. Uh, what we want to do, of course, is we want to disable the audio here so that it comes through our speakers. And then uh, I'm going to turn this on. So Python transfer is on. Um, hopefully you can see that. And what my hope is that when I, um, and so this is to the mic here, this will be listening and do the conversion. I'm going to turn this on, see, save this and should all work automatically. So let's do that. So I'm going to, um, so let's see if we can do see, save here. So you can actually see it. This part is always tricky. So there we go. So I'm going to type in C save. And again, the, the name doesn't matter, but I'm just going to call it hex. I hit return. Uh, I'm going to, I should type enter. So you see that's listening right now. Oh yeah, so this this is listening right now. I'm gonna type enter at uh, same time type load. Oops. It's so hard to type with one hand. Double quote. So that's on, type she save. 
That's recording. It's all automated. It's a pretty long program, but here's hoping that this will actually work. <laughs> But other than uh, starting this program up, I just type C save and C load at the same time, and it should actually uh, and it stopped. It's doing its thing, and now it's loading. Look at that. Yeah, so the screen does go away um, when you uh, finish, but uh, uh, the automated uh, mechanism did do its job. This is going to take a little longer to load, but that's okay. And uh, then we should just simply be able to type run on that computer. Um, and uh, let's see if that works. Try stretching my arm to stay out of camera view. It's, it's loaded, so if I hit enter, that's the program. And if I type run and type, uh, what did I do, four, five, six, uh, yeah, four, five, six, seven, enter, digit one, uh, it's digit seven, D11, one, one, I think is what it was. And yay, there it is. All right. So, um, yeah, that is, uh, that was my plan for today. Um, as I said, if I wanted to do this, um, realistically, I, I might do, uh, use a, Raspberry Pi, and this is an old one, but you can get uh, the ones that are half the size that do, um, uh, that are even cheaper. Now this only has audio out, so I don't know how you would do, um, uh, I don't know how you would do mic in with that, but um, uh, still, uh, so these are all doable, but again, it's it's not really a, a project that I want to um, do at this point. Uh, I just think there's a big audience in, for it, but I just wanted to prototype that it can be done. So that was uh, that was pretty interesting, and I hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, um, so that's all I got for my first September video uh, for the month of September. Um, I'm, I'll, I have a, a TRS-80 Model 3 uh, that isn't in working order, so I might do a brief video on, on trying to debug that. I think the I need it needs to have a cap or something added to the power supply because it just doesn't boot up. And when I first got it, I wasn't into doing these retro computing stuff, but I've, I've, I've worked now and watched enough videos to where I think I have the confidence to actually take a look at it and see if I can debug it. So that might come up. That, that also has a, um, a tie into my past. It wasn't a computer I actually played with since I think the first computer I played with at Radio Shack was the TRS Model 1. But I went back to that Radio Shack, um, like about six or seven years ago. Uh, uh, from when I was there in the eighties and I, I was surprised it was still open. I talked to the folks in there and, and I, I told them, like, oh, as a kid, I used to be here all the time playing on your Radio Shack computers. And they said, well, you have an old one in the back. Do you want it? And I'm like, sure. And they gave it to me. And, and so it might have actually been sitting on display at when, while I was there as a kid, even though I didn't play with it, since it was more of a business machine. It's one of those all in one units with two five and a quarter inch floppies, but still. So I thought that was kind of amazing. So that, you know, I could have brushed by that as a kid. That could have been my first computer I touched before I ever got anything else. Um, I just don't remember if I actually ever played with that or not. In any case, uh, so that's a machine I have. It's not in working order, but I should, I should at least take it apart and take a look at it for a Subtandy video. So, so that might be another video that I'm doing. Um, uh, I still have some QL videos coming out. I've been actually working on my ZX simulator, so uh, I'll, I'll be doing some uh, videos on, on optimizing the code a bit and so and, and actually showing you how an emulator works so that's what the, the zx is right it's a, um, that's my short for zx simulator uh, and uh, so do, watch for those videos to come out um, i might in the future do a, a series on how to write that's a rom emulator but how to actually write a machine emulator because i i have written some of those as well and uh Print hello, right? Um, so I've got lots of cool videos coming out. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, I don't think I'll do a Tandy uh, video each. Uh, should I do it? You gotta do it. Oops. Does it not have it? 
Well, you don't have an exclamation in there. Um, uh, I, I, I'm not going to do one, I think, for each uh, Saturday in September. I'll probably do some other ones as well. But I, I might have one one other Septandi, uh, at least one other Septandi video coming out. Um, maybe not next week, but the week after that. So stay tuned for that. In any case, uh, I'll end there. Thanks for joining me. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you next time.